I like making uh, unique videos, stuff that not only nobody else has ever talked about, but stuff that I've never talked about before. And I give you a big secret on lens reviews, okay? And this is going to be a very insightful video, and uh, hopefully it will give you some introspection into correct evaluation on uh, lens reviews. And there's a lot to consider. I've reviewed thousands of lenses. I've had countless thousands pass through my hands. But let's just forget about that. How many lenses pass through my hands or anything else? Let's just talk about um, true objective reality of what a real and uh, genuine and helpful lens review would be. But first we actually have to understand the psychology behind the reviewer. And I hate psychology. I'm not really going to get into psychology. Essentially, and of course, photography is an art form, right? And of course, there's many different varieties of photography. There's photojournalistic, and of course, there are people that do reproduction. Like, and of course, product photography is also a type of uh, reproduction. Of course, you do a lot of post-processing, you know, drag the contrast slider, all sorts of tricks, like spray painting the hamburger to make it look extra juicy, stuff like that, which isn't so real. But then, you know, barrel distortion and uh, lens resolution uh, becomes uh, super critical. And then there's 95% of the rest of photography, which is, uh, I say 95%, we could argue if it's 80 to 95%. Let's not get bogged down in the minutiae here, okay? We're talking about the je ne sais quoi, the ineffable qualities of a lens. Now, some of the most famous contacts and uh, Zeiss and Leica lenses are not all that damn sharp, but their bokeh is incredible, and they are just crotch-melting, mind-blowing when it comes to black and white photography. I've had a lot of people tell me, like, you know, I got the most expensive lens in the world for landscape or portraiture, and it doesn't look, it looks like crap compared to, uh, you know, this old, not-so-sharp Leica or contacts lens. By the way, one of the secrets of uh, Leica digital cameras, by the way, is a weak color filter array. So you actually get better SNR, signal-to-noise ratio, hitting the sensor. But it's also uh, largely the low element count lenses. I mean, micro contrast is not, uh, and it should be called uh, lens fidelity or image fidelity. It's not something I came up with long before I was born, okay? The people at Zeiss, Leica, and Contacts were calling it all sorts of stuff. Lens pop, Zeiss pop, blah, 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 blah. It's a reality, but we're not talking about image fidelity or micro contrast in this video. We're talking about the big picture on lenses. And there are two type of people that not only make lens reviews, yes, um, but also two types of people, essentially two types, there are many different types, but two essential types that are reading lens reviews. When I say, and here's an example, I uh, recently reviewed the new Fujifilm 16-80, to and I called it, which is oxymoronic to talk about a perfect zoom lens, because you talk about perfect prime lenses. By the way, this is one of the best lenses I've ever reviewed in my life. This is a 45mm GFX lens. So saying a perfect zoom lens is really kind of contradictory, but that's why I never say stuff like that, but I actually meant it. And then there was a few other reviews. People said, oh, I know, I hate that tattooed bald guy. I'm going to wait for a real reviewer. And then they'll come out with some other guys. Well, it's got some barrel distortions, a little bit of pin cushioning here, and, you know, it, the focus breathes a little bit when uh, doing video. When you're zooming, you know, the focus will jump a little bit, which can be fixed in firmware. Okay, so I have people that will nitpick the uh, objective, uh, hardcore characteristics of a lens, rather than taking into consideration what the lens is in totality. Judging a lens, and it's kind of a perfect analogy, I've said this many times, judging a lens based upon merely sharpness or, uh, or vignetting or lack thereof is as stupid as some idiot judging a wine uh, only on its alcohol content. Because that's like what a wino would do, right? He like begs for money on the corner and he goes into the liquor store with six bucks and you like, where's that cheap crap with the high alcohol content? <laughs> you know, you get drunk really fast, right? Yeah, this is stupid to judge a lens like that as it is to judge how good a wine is. You know, I think I made my point. And a lot of people are very myopic that way. They only see certain characteristics. Now, I took that lens on the totality of what it is. It has incredible bokeh. Okay? The 16 to 80. This is only one example. I judge that lens on the totality of what it is. And I called it a perfect uh, uh, zoom lens, which is basic, is totally unheard of. I only know of 
really six perfect zoom lenses. And of course, there's no such thing as a perfect lens. I don't literally mean perfect. Even the, some of the best uh, prime lenses, there's no such thing as a perfect, perfect lens, period. It's absolutely impossible. It cannot exist, okay? just doesn't exist. But I mean that in the broad sense. It's a perfect zoom lens, which is extremely rare. But in getting to the psychology of the two types of people that review lenses, and some of the best, most famous images in the world were taken with fuzzy-ass, old, not-so-damn-sharp lenses. It's just the images are memorable. Okay? Here is another fact. It is about the metaphysics and uh, the ontology of the mind which is exactly like field theory, because what actually, a, an awesome photograph will do one of three things. It'll either pull you in, or it'll actually push you away because it's really shocking, or it will stop you. And really, human psychology and reaction to things is exactly no different than field theory. You'll either, you either uh, centripetally, uh, you know, converge into the image, like, oh my God, look at that. You know what I'm talking about. Or uh, you were repulsed by like some sort of very famous image. Uh, I think one is like of a person on fire running from a war zone and just their face is all twisted. It's very horrific. But it is a, uh, you know, one of the most memorable images of the 20th century. It pushes you away. And so uh, um, you have these inertia vectors or force vectors, or they'll stop you. You know, a photograph will stop you. It doesn't either pull you in or push you away, but it does stop you. And that's what makes a great photograph. Not vignetting, or lack thereof. Not how sharp the image is. You see, there are two aspects to judging. Because last I recall, like I said, photography yeah, is an art form. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And obviously, like... If uh, you're doing a, a cover, a photo for a cover of a prestigious... You know, the images do have to be sharp. No one wants to see a blurry image of a hot model, right? I understand this. And if you're doing reproduction work, you're doing a commercial product, there's some important things. These are clinical lenses. Clinical, you know, clinical. Boom, boom, boom. Resolution lines per millimeter. How much uh, vignetting, how much uh, chromatic aberration there is. That's important, but... The vast majority, like 80%, the je ne sais quoi of a lens. How good is the, uh, is the color transmissiveness of the lens? How great is the bokeh? How well does it render? What about the autofocus speed? What about the characteristics? It was weight, its size, how fast it autofocuses? Does the front element, uh, the front end uh, zoom out too far? I mean, there are many, or so, actually 20 primary elements of a lens review to be considered. But there are two, two types of people that review them. There are people that examine the lens from the, cl the clinical side. They're sitting there with a, a, a slide rule and measuring every aspect. And there are people that look for that. And when I do a review and people don't get the, you know, ah, oh, it's just, you know, that, well, he's, that's a horrible review. Is it? It's taken the totality of what a lens is. If I were to judge a lens, well, this lens isn't very sharp. Not this one. Well, not super, super, extremely sharp. Well, you know, that's not a good lens then. Well, some of the best, most sought-after lenses on Earth are not that damn sharp. Summa Lux, Summa Crown, some of Zeiss's lenses. I mean, so shut the hell up with that stupid BS, okay? Even though I'm not a... F I kind of make fun of Leica fanboys. You know, these are overpriced, obnoxious snob cameras, you know, but like, some, there's some Leica lenses that are... The one thing that Leica people have over the rest of the damn... All you damn people, the Sony people, the Nikon people, the Fujifilm, they actually appreciate, like, damn, that's the image right there. That's it. Look at that shit. That's just... Damn. You know, an image is, boom, dropped out of a six-element uh, Sumalux, you know, $8,000 lens, um... It's uh, doped with lanthanum dioxide and or lead. By the way, there's an exception in Europe. And Zeiss uses it too, lead, for doping the lenses since we can't use radioactive thorium anymore. People say, what are these, these images I see from the 1960s? I mean, it wasn't just post-processing uh, and uh, printing uh, master tips. I mean, it was the lens. It's like, man, I can't do anything. I got the most expensive lens. It's like, yeah, you're using a 13 element. I mean, these were like old radioactive thorium contact lenses and some other, uh, you know, uh, several of them are even uncoated. And there's no coating. Coatings are only really important when you talk about inner element light balance, where you're talking about, like, there's no specific number, 
but roughly six to eight elements or more. You know, then coatings are really important to drop out on inner element light bounce and flare and issues like that. But like all those friggin' Russian lenses, you know, none of those are sharp. People take portraits with those, like wedding portraits with a swirly ass bokeh. I mean, those lenses vignette the hell and gone. They're sharp as a frickin' wet toothbrush. Yeah? They're uncoated. The flare to hell and gone. Just flare. Just like, there's gonna be a light behind you. It's the only light source, and the lens will still flare. And yet, people love to buy those, like the Helios uh, 85mm F1.4. I got two of those, yeah? I mean, that lens ain't sharp. It's got swirly bokeh like crazy ass swirly bokeh. Uncoated lenses, flare to hell, poor vignetting, ain't that damn sharp, but the lens will drop the honey. Man, you just take a portrait shot with that. I mean, you, if you know what you're doing and frame your subject correctly, I mean, people are like, damn, that is just awesome. That's what I'm talking about. There's the clinical side, and people are the same way. There are clinical minds, well, this lens is not super, super, super extremely sharp. I don't think it's that great. Yeah, but this lens is highly coveted by, you know, this is a Sumalux, six element, man, the micro, the image fidelity, just boom, incredible for black and white photography. The bokeh is amazing. Yeah, but it's not extremely sharp, and the vignetting, and uh, shut the hell up. There is a place for that in photography. Yes, yes, clinical stuff, yeah. Reproduction, food photography, uh, product photography, a few other things. The most famous images in the world, photojournalism, war photos, like 98% of those images are blurry as piss and sh as sharp as a, as a, wet, a sack of uh, wet rats. Not sharp at all. It is like squint your eyes and pretend it's sharp. You don't even need to because the image just smacks you in the face. Listen, the human brain, when it reacts to a crotch-melting, mind-blowing photo, when you see something for the first time, and it's a photo that's just like, oh my god, look at that shit. There is no point in that millisecond, or even seconds afterwards, where your brain is going, is it sharp, is it sharp? Oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. This is the appropriate time, and this is what the rest of these idiots are so guilty of, doing lens reviews. You know, this is, this is exactly, I hate to put a sock puppet on my hand and look like a lunatic, but let me imitate exactly what all these people do. It's a sharp, 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 it's a sharp. Shut the hell up with that. Literally, and this is not my opinion or position or belief. Every awesome photo that you've ever seen, you know, before your brain started, you know, calculating shit, and it was just like, bam, like, God, look at that image. It never took into consideration vignetting or pin cushioning or how sharp it is <laughs> it never has ever done that nobody has seen a jaw-dropping photo their brain did not process that in the first millisecond that it recognized what it is or even a few seconds afterwards maybe when you got up really close like man this image is crap it's not that sharp my god i love this image but then it's not that sharp man this is the most incredible image but it's not sharp but you don't give a shit, but you want a print of it anyway. You know, it's like, man, this image is inspiring. You see, this is the actual psychology and ontology of a correct, well-balanced, let me repeat those two words again twice more, well-balanced, well-balanced lens review. Taking in the totality of what it is. Yeah? Instead of some poindexter pencil-necked, troglodytic weasel. It's like, look at that, look at that, eight, two, it's got two less lines per millimeter than the other lens. Oh, ah. <laughs> Shut up. You know, that's interesting. More information is always good. But a well-balanced lens review takes into consideration everything that I take into consideration. Is my way the right way when it comes to lens reviews? Yes. You see, sometimes too, well, actually many times, for sake of humor, to make people laugh, you know, I could sit here and do a lens review like this. This lens is great. Uh, this is my image. And no one wants to see that, you know. Just because I'm a slightly humorous or slightly goofy when I'm talking, I take lens reviews and camera reviews dead serious. Dead serious. Look in my eyes and tell me if I'm lying. Dead serious. 
Because I don't want anybody to spend money and like, oh my God, this is not what he said it was. And oh my God. That is what a well-balanced, correct lens review should be like. The way I do it. I'm not telling anybody to imitate me, but I'm telling people to take into consideration the totality of what something is. If it is like a tilt shift, like here's a perfect example. If it's a tilt shift lens, which is for accurate, you know, landscape, product photography, um, architecture, interiors, man talking about sharpness and vignetting is really important. Because that is a technical lens, a PC perspective control lens or a tilt shift. Yes, 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 yes. Nobody really gives a shit, at least not too much, about the bouquet of a tilt shift lens. We really need to know the technical characteristics and sharpness, vignetting, pin cushioning, on and on and on and on, chromatic aberration. That is a technical lens and it is priced as such also is really friggin' expensive. Like even my 24 millimeter uh, tilt shift, really expensive. The 19 millimeter perspective control Nikkor, yeah, 3,000 plus, it's over $3,000. Yes, yeah, it's very important. I hope you like these videos. This is a unique video that no one else has made and even I have not made. I hope you do like it. If you like it, you can always click the link below. Yeah, because any help is always greatly appreciated. Or tell me how much you hate it. Yeah, peace out, Girl Scout. As they say in Russia, do svidanie i uvidimsia. Eh? As they say in Hawaii, aloha. Or as they say in uh, South New Jersey, see you later, girlfriend.